All right, guys, today we are going to make a open pour fluke mold. I've been wanting to do an open pour mold for a while because I see a lot of people with 3D printers going the route of printing a master and then making a silicone mold. To me, that's just a lot of extra time, effort, and trouble that you don't need. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. It's gonna be a one-piece mold, uh, open pour from the top, of course, with a hook slot. And it's gonna be a little bitty fluke. It's about uh, 90, yeah, 90 millimeters, which is a, right around three and a half inches. Perfect for Bayou Bass, and then I'm gonna be doing with this fluke a little bit later. <laughs> Good one, man, ain't no day, got another one. Let's go. All right, guys, quick review of the parameters here that I'm rocking. So again, like I said, the length is 90 millimeters. My max height, which is as deep as the lure is gonna get, is 16 millimeters. Nose diameter, I used a diameter because I'm gonna make a circle for the nose. If you're using something else, use something else. Now, here's where I think I didn't talk about in parameters too much last time, but I've been using this technique a lot uh, to make it easy to scale these lures later. And for, um, I don't wanna say, like this is gonna be the midpoint. So this is, I call it the midpoint. It's the part of the lure that is going to be the tallest. And I set that based on the length of the lure and it's a percentage, right? So what this says right here is 40.4 of the way from the front of the lure is where my max height point is gonna be, the, the deepest part of the belly, if you will. And so when I come in here and I make this lure say 110 millimeters long, all of those calculations will be in proportion to the length of the lure. And that saves me time. If I set this to like a specific length, like uh, you can see here, the value is what it calculated 36 millimeters. If I came in here, I set that to exactly 36 millimeters. And then I went in and made the lure 110. My midpoint is still gonna be up here at 36 and not adjust accordingly. And then I have to go in and adjust it and fiddle with it. This way I change one parameter, lure length, and it calculates out. And I also do that here with, uh, we're gonna put a hook slot in this thing and then I want the tail section of my fluke to start eight millimeters after that hook slot. So I know I have a little bit of uh, meat there, if you will, after the hook slot before the tail starts. And I'm also doing it here on the max width of the lure, which I set off my nose diameter. In this case, it's 20% larger. So 1.2 times the 0.2 is the 20% larger. Um, of my nose is how wide it's gonna be. So it's not gonna grow that much in width, but again, I drive it off the nose. So if I change the nose, my width changes in proportion. And of course I do that with the tail. Wow. All right, so you've seen me build lures this way before, so we're gonna fast forward through this part. And uh, when we get the lure all built, we'll start talking about the mold. Oh, sorry, we're gonna jump in a little earlier. So since I'm doing an open pour mold, right? So the top is gonna be completely flat. I try to use this um, middle red line here as kind of the top of my lure. I can certainly build above that line, but just know that anything you build above that, we're gonna chop it off to make our open pour cavity. So we're gonna basically be building, instead of from the center, like we do normally, we're gonna be building from that line down. Okay, now we're gonna fast forward. We divide our max width by two because we're only doing half. So a uh, quick note here, I probably got a little bit of an undercut here. You know, this isn't perfectly straight, um, but since, you know, it's soft plastic, it's probably not that big of a deal. If you were gonna get this CNC, it would be a little bit more of a big deal because it's hard to machine that undercut but we're 3D printing, so we don't care that much. All right, so here is the very end of the lure. I'm turning it back into a circle. We're gonna put a tail on the end of this. So it's gonna end up being a little bit longer than the 90 millimeters uh, that I talked about. But um, here's another way that you can use named parameters and put the percentages in the actual drawing itself. Instead of making another parameter that drives it, just type them in here. All 
right, so we're gonna loft this without rails first to see what kind of shape we get and how that looks. All right, that doesn't look half bad, actually. Yeah. You know what, I think I'm gonna stick with that for now. And let's, let's keep this one plain. I'm gonna do a follow-on video to show you how you can add some cool uh, details to this kind of lure, but we're gonna keep this one straightforward, nice, simple, and clean. All right, so now we just create a mirror. Make sure we're on bodies. You've seen this before. Boom. Airplane is boom. And there we go. Nice little fluke without a tail. Now let's get to the tail. I've been making a lot of flukes lately. I just released like three different flukes to my Patreon group, which if you're interested in getting molds and hard lures at least once a month, you should join my Patreon. Links in the description below. Check it out. All right. So what are we going to do with this tail? Like I've been seeing a lot of those like willow tail kind of things kind of like diamonds. Uh, so let's go do one of those. And we're actually gonna use a form editor now. I'm not a huge fan of the form editor for making lure bodies because it's not parametric, which means I can't easily go in and change the dimensions of the lure uh, later on. But for this tail, I think I wanna make it kind of organic-ish. So let's give it a shot. So we click on the form editor. I'm gonna start with something called a quad ball. And we're just gonna put it on there and take it kind of back here. Well, let's start it there. And eight millimeters looks right. We're gonna mess it up anyway, so that's cool. And we're gonna do symmetry, mirror, and if we want length, yeah, length, symmetry. That's boom, 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 boom. That's the technical term. All right, so now the whole trick in the form editor is clicking on this modify thing and then grabbing faces. I'll link to a couple of people actually that are doing really cool things with the form editor in Fusion 360, specifically around fishing lures, and I'll probably even link a few of their videos at the end of this video. Why am I pointing at you like this? I don't know. You, you go there. You look at the videos. All right. So once you click on modify, you can start grabbing and you'll see this yellow part. Let's make sure at the top here, you'll see the yellow. That means that I'm going to move that at the same time. So if I move this out, all right, that other side moves accordingly. All right, so once we got something we think we like, we just hit finish form. Now we're back to our lure. We got that little, I don't know what that is, arrowhead tail. The reason I like flukes is you can have a lot of fun with the tail. And we just need to combine those together. And I haven't saved, so I should probably save. All right, and uh, I can combine these or I can not. Um, in this case, you know, I'm probably gonna come along and do a bunch of different molds. So. I leave it uncombined and I can just kind of make new tails, stick them on there and readjust a few things and it makes it easier to make the mold. All right, so now we got this done. Now, one thing that we can do with open pore molds that we don't really have the ability to do with an injection mold is we can make it kind of fit the lure body perfectly. With an injection mold, you know, I have, I think I do 16.4 millimeters for the opening of the hand injector that I use. And so that kind of drives the overall diameters of the thickness of the mold because I have to have at least, what is that, 8.2 millimeters that are gonna be eaten up by the hole and then I need some uh, beef around that. So I end up making each of my halves 15 millimeters. In an open pour mold, you know, we're just gonna print a solid chunk of resin and so we can make it fairly tight to the lure body itself with not a lot of extra beef, if you will. So let's make our mold body. Okay, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna do it from the side here. Let's do a rectangle. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space in the front. You know, you do need a little bit of extra. You can't make it like razor thin because a uh, scope resin is a high temp resin, but it does need a little bit of thickness in order to maintain its uh, shape under heat.
And then we just hit E for extrude. I'm gonna look at the top here. And we want to make this symmetrical. And we're gonna come out just past that width. New body is good. And you can see this is the stuff we're gonna chop off. We're gonna lose a little bit of the top and this tail section back here. All right, so we can turn on my opacity control to like 70%. We can see through this thing here. Now, one thing you'll notice here is we're gonna have an undercut on this tail, right? So we're gonna have resin going over the top of that. Um, again, open pore mold, 3D printed, not something we really care about. It's gonna be easy to pop that tail out of there, no problem. If you were designing this to do CNC, um, you wouldn't be able to do that, at least in a single block mold, right? So we would have to split this mold in half from the top down. Uh, is that vertically? I guess vertically, right? In order to get into that pocket. Um, but we don't care about that. Okay, so now we're just gonna combine. We're going to, my target body is my mold. My tool body is my open port and my tail. Gotta chop them both out of there. And we'll go ahead and keep those tools around and we'll cut them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, but you can see that we also have some parts that are not going to go away, I don't think. So let's click OK. Let's take those tails, let's take those. And you can see we didn't really get all the way through there. Now, I can hack these out if I um, wanted to, but let's just fix it correctly. And so what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna come back to our sketch five, and I'm gonna go ahead and rename this Mold Sketch, and let's edit it. So we can just offset this just a touch and we're gonna drive it with a dimension. And let's, um, let's make it 0.5. Okay, and then we should go ahead and dimension all of these bad boys here. Make that 103, make that 19.2. Okay, then we're gonna constrain this front edge to the center, pop it up and let's just make that 2.8 to get it fully constrained. All right, so now I just click Finish Sketch, it goes, and now I have a nice opening. Let's turn back opacity to 100%. See what's going on in here. Okay, that looks good. It looked a little weird um, earlier, but that looks fine. That overhang is, might get me there, but it looks pretty cool. We're gonna roll with it for now. It might be completely foobard, who knows. Okay, so now we're gonna add chamfers to the outside edges to save a minuscule amount of resin. It also helps it make it uh, easier to get off the build plate. And I'm selecting the edges here instead of all the faces because I don't want to put a chamfer on this top edge. All right. Now, let's do the hook slot. Hook slot's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna come in at the top here, do a new sketch on the top plane. We're gonna take a line, make sure it's centered. And we got hook slot length, boom. There's my hook slot. Now, the start point, um, you know, you need a little bit of beef up front in the nose. So we just need to add this dimension from the center line to here. It's 4.8 now. Oof, that's probably about where it needs to be, depending on how you rig your flukes. Since we're just using this for ourselves, we'll go ahead and make it five. Um, you know, obviously the more uh, meat you have on the front there, the better. If you're gonna like uh, nose rig it with a, uh, like a wacky rig or you're gonna put a, a screw eye in there, but we'll leave it like that for now. All right, let's finish that sketch. Now we're gonna use the thin extrude command. We're gonna click on this guy, thin extrude, click that line. And here's a fun trick. I'm gonna do uh, two sides. So my wall thickness is my slot width. And then I'm gonna drag this guy down and let's take a look at it from the side. All right, we wanna drag it down. We can drag it down as far as we need to go, but we need to go obviously all the way through the lure body. Now, when you do two sides, a lot of people think that it's, um, you know, to, to go out, but you can actually go in on one side or a negative number, right? So if I grab this top, I can come down and this is gonna be how much, um, you know, beef I have on the top, if you will. And so let's do negative five. That's probably good there. Yeah, that, that looks like a decent hook slot. And we want to do for now a new body. And we do new body here because I'm going to come in and I'm just going to add a chamfer to that edge, probably. All 
All right, so let me point out something to you. Well, you already need to be thinking about how you are going to print this. You know, this, the fastest way to print this would probably be, you know, put this, this face here flat to the build plate. But what's gonna happen if you do that, so when you get to this hook slot, it's, it's not gonna work, right? Because that, that hook slot's gonna go out into space. You're printing with thin layers. It's just gonna get ripped all apart. Unless you had a million supports in there and you don't wanna do that, because that's a mess. Now we could come in and we could split this mold in half and do a different kind of hook slot design, but like we don't wanna do that either. We could print it from the nose first, but you end up with a similar problem here, right? This edge, as it's printing down, right? Is this gonna all of a sudden jut out? It's gonna be really thin, right? Our layer heights are typically, you know, 50 nanometers, 0.05 millimeters, right? Super thin. And when it goes to pull up, it's gonna break off, right? So if you wanted to print from the nose first, uh, because you have some other detail in the lure that prevents you from printing it from the tail first, uh, you would need to come in here and add a fillet to that edge. And you need to fillet it basically all the way, probably to there, right? Which again is not, that great either um, but you need to leave as as little hanging off here as possible right you can you can bring it back down here and maybe make it work like that but you still have like half of it hanging off there right so in this case the way to print it is going to be relatively self-obvious right if we look at the back here you can see that this hook slot piece comes straight out of the tail there's no overhang there it's going to just um, work perfectly it's part of the mold i don't know if i can pour that tail dude i suck at hand pouring that tail is pretty narrow all right, it's a pretty big chunk of resin here, but I think we are ready to give it a print. Okay guys, I hope you like that design overview. I'm gonna go print some of these, and in the next video, you're gonna see me print them, pour them, and go fish with them. And that link will be right here when it's done. Take care, tight lines. Why am I gonna punch you, bro? You're my friend, you're watching my videos. I don't wanna punch you, I wanna hug you. That was weird.